I heard she was only 17. Well, Bunny's never been short of a few bob, has he? What, do you think she's after his money? Oh, well, he's no Robert Redford, let's face it. Shh. El Dorado, Wednesday at 1.50 and continuing at 7 on BBC One. In 999 this week, a family Sunday stroll could end in disaster. Hey! Currents that swirl around that rock face are very horrendous, they're treacherous. You've got 10 minutes, you've got to come out of there. It was like a countdown, really. If she was paralysed after we'd moved her, really, it was down to, to our mishandling. A Race Against Time in 999, Thursday, 9.30, BBC One. Later tonight, here on Wales on One, in a change to the published programme, highlights of the deciding games and the finals of the men's doubles at Wimbledon. That's at 10.50. In half an hour, Panorama considers the role of Hong Kong's new Governor-General Chris Patton and the task he faces in smoothing the path to Chinese rule in 1997. That's after the world news from the BBC with Martin Lewis. Dentists vote to take on the government over pay by refusing to treat many patients under the NHS. The Health Secretary tells them to think long and hard and offers a fundamental review. From Belfast, London and Dublin, the top politicians gather for historic talks on the future of Ulster. And that magic number, 8,115, David Gower sets a new England test record. Good evening. The two biggest dentists' associations have voted overwhelmingly to stop treating many patients under the NHS, but disagree on how to go about it. One of them recommends turning down any new NHS patients, whatever their age. The other will refuse NHS treatment to all new and existing patients who are not entitled to free health care. The dentists say that cuts in their fees starting this week will reduce their average income by up to 20%. The government disputes that, saying the reductions are to claw back an alleged overpayment and promising a fundamental pay review. Our health correspondent, Sarah Barclay, reports. I'll give you a little injection. Although the government says most dentists are earning around £41,000 a year, more than the target set by their pay review body, many dentists, particularly those working in London and the South East, disagree. They say the government expects them to continue treating more patients for less money. Today, the ballot results revealed the extent of their anger. We've seen this in meetings up and down the country where dentists have voted to either uh, withdraw from the NHS or not see any new patients. And this ballot really is a reflection of that anger. Under the BDA vote, dentists will continue to provide NHS treatment for all their existing patients. But they've decided not to accept any new NHS patients, even those entitled to free treatment. That includes pregnant women, children and those on income support. Another ballot by the smaller General Dental Practitioners Association went even further. Its 4,000 members voted to refuse NHS treatments to all new and existing patients. But those entitled to free care will continue to receive it. The uh, result means uh, the end, I think, of the generally available national health dental services as we've come to know them over the last uh, 30 or 40 years. The prospect of a dramatic reduction in NHS dentistry led to renewed charges by Labour's health spokesman Robin Cook that creeping privatisation of the NHS was underway. What other word would the honourable members opposite prefer us to use now that more and more dental patients are being told they must go private? Mrs Bottomley said there was no evidence that patients were unable to get NHS dental treatment if they wanted it, but said the government would intervene directly by employing salaried dentists if necessary. I very much hope dentists will think long and hard before taking steps that jeopardise NHS patients. But if they do take steps, then we have a duty to safeguard the interests of NHS patients and we shall not hesitate to seek the employment of salaried dentists. Almost one in four dentists is already refusing to treat some NHS patients, including children. But if dentists decided to desert their NHS patients en masse, it would leave thousands of people with no option but to go private. 
and that could mean a huge increase in dental charges. Harish Patel, a dentist working in South London, has decided that from Wednesday he'll take on no new fee-paying NHS patients because he says he can no longer afford to. Our expenses are so high. Um, we don't earn 40,000. I mean, we have to pay our staff, the laboratories and what have you. And after all that, we may, with a 7% pay cut, just about break even. But this Glasgow dentist is refusing to turn patients away. The vast majority of my patients are on income support. They don't have to pay for the dental treatment. So obviously, you know, for me to say no new NHS patients, there's going to be a whole population out there that aren't going to be getting treated. These results come as no surprise, but it will now be up to every individual dentist in the country to decide what action they now wish to take. But it will come as an embarrassment to the Health Secretary, Virginia Bottomley, particularly in the week when her department is about to launch a white paper on improving the health of the nation. The most broadly based talks on the political future of Northern Ireland for 70 years have got underway in London. It's hoped the talks will lead to an agreement on self-government for Northern Ireland. The chairman is Sir Ninian Stephen, a former Australian Governor-General. The British and Irish government delegations are headed by the Northern Ireland Secretary, Sir Patrick Mayhew, and the Irish Deputy Prime Minister, John Wilson. They're joined by leading politicians from both the Unionist parties in Northern Ireland, as well as the SDLP and Alliance parties. Another priority is to try and establish new relationships between Belfast and Dublin and London and Dublin. Sir Patrick Mayhew said he'd been delighted by the scale of events in the talks so far while the Irish government described today's talks as calm, civilised and businesslike. Well, I'm joined now by our Northern Ireland political correspondent, Jim Dougal, who's at Lancaster House, where today's talks were held. Jim, how much of an achievement is this to get all the parties together around a single table? Oh, I think it is a major achievement. After all, uh, for the first time today, uh, representatives of all the major strands of unionism in Northern Ireland actually sat down with members of an Irish uh, government with the intention of participating in full-scale negotiations. If uh, this meeting had been suggested a year ago, many people would have said that it just would not happen. And because of that, because all the parties, in, the main parties in Northern Ireland who espouse a political way forward,